Oh, it's about 39, and just like that, we're up to episode 9. Um, I am hoping there's a season 2. There's some talk. They were planning to do a season 2 until the issues with Chris Knopf happened, but the fact that he really has no effect, or would have no effect on the second season as he was already written out in the like first episode, I'm hoping it doesn't stop anything. I'm hoping they were just getting nervous over politi- politics and so forth and are actually going to just do it. So there's talk, but no news. Now, this episode... Um, no strings attached. I liked one of the things I liked about it because um, I'm really enjoying the series, and I don't understand the people who are hating on it. Um, I think a lot of these people just have issues with diversity, and um, they want the girls to be more traditional or conventional or something. Um, it's a really strange dynamic of uh, the criticism that, that you see of the show, particularly Miranda and Shay. People are really bitter about that relationship, and there's so many people just just you know wishing. For it to go badly and for Miranda to show up in Cleveland or wherever she was going to meet Jay and to have them um, be with another person or something and they're hoping for there was they're wishing the best for the worst for her and I'm like really and I was hoping that wouldn't happen and it didn't basically uh, Miranda just went met up with her and it's f- f- later and they're still dating and um, there are some issues there but they're they're dating and they're in a relationship and she's not some they're not some stereotypical male who's going to be cheating on her and um, none of these issues and dynamics are playing through, which is what their storyline was about. But the first storyline I think I'll get to is Charlotte. Um, Charlotte's story is always the smallest story, I feel, but um, I think we love her the most because she's just funny and, um, um, yeah. So, (laughs) Lily wants to go to a pool party, but um, it happens to be the same date she's scheduled to get her period. So she's freaking out, and Charlotte's like, well, you're going to have to learn how to put in a tampon. And she's like, apparently resisting this. I'm like, I never thought about this as a guy. I just assumed girls would start using tampons the second they get their period when, when they hit puberty, but apparently, apparently some women don't, or maybe it's a lot harder than it seems. So the whole their whole storyline is her trying to sort this out. First off, she doesn't want to do it. Then she demands that um, Charlotte teach her at dinner. Um, So she goes off into the bathroom to help her and we have a really awkward scene where Anthony brought a date and this guy walks in and Charlotte's telling um, um, them how to deal with the dinner while, while she's in the bathroom. And this guy goes, oh, is this a Jewish dinner? And he's like, oh, you know what? It didn't happen. And Anthony's just like, get out! And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> I was like, really? How did you not know that about him yet? Because those people usually broadcast that sort of stuff right away. Um, so I felt bad for Anthony. Obviously, they got rid of him. They went on with the dinner. Um, and um, Charlotte, through many attempts, um, did actually help her teach how to use, you know. So that's kind of their story. But later on, there was an issue with the string needing more help and then eventually Charlotte said I draw the line at pulling your string out you have to do it yourself and because Charlotte's actually just finished her period she hadn't had it for four months so she's like I'm finally done I didn't have any of the reaction you girls had which is how the episode started off where she was talking about not having a period anymore and um, not having any of those hot flashes and stuff like the other girls were sort of joking about she was going to get and then um, she actually gets a, a flash period um, when she's wearing white, fortunately the girls tell her very quickly and give her a jacket to tie around her waist. So that's kind of Charlotte's story for the episode. Now, um, Miranda's was a little bit more complicated, but not much. Um, basically, her and Shay are doing well, but Miranda is having difficulty because Shay's not conventional. They, um, they're not a man, they're not, that's not her girlfriend. The, the, the way they relate to the relationship or re- I mean, I don't know how to work it out, frankly. I don't know exactly how they work it out when they are them. But um, Miranda is acting like the girlfriend. And when some people come up to get Shay's autograph um, and take some selfies with them, um, Miranda says, I'm just the girlfriend. And she's like, mm. and I'm like, oh, what was that? Is that is she is she going too far? And it wasn't that she's going too far. It's just, it's it's the, um, it's, it's the, it's the language. It's, it's the, it's the, um, the um, heteronormalized and conventional and all these sort of issues. So they don't talk about it right away, but later on Miranda shows up on her door 
I'm trying to not slip with my pronouns, but I keep doing it. It's not disrespect, it's just hard to remember. Um, Miranda shows up at the door, um, bringing them cookies, and they're like, what is this? And Miranda's like, oh my god, you've got someone here! Because she expects them to act like a traditional male and be cheating and all that. And um, they're like, no, I just was playing some writing, I wish you'd text me. So Miranda freaks out, she's like, oh my god, I'm not Meg Ryan in a rom-com, what am I doing? And she's like, I hear myself, I just want to get away from the whole situation. So she runs down the stairs, Che follows her, they, they, they discuss it, and they try and explain to Miranda, look, let's just do our relationship, this is working, I love you, everything, but you need to stop putting us in these sort of stereotypical norms and expectations and acting like this way because you're acting a bit crazy. So Miranda leaves, takes the cookies, which I thought was a little harsh, considering all the drama she just threw at their doorstep, I think she should have handed them the cookies and then left, but she's like, I'm going to eat them on the way home. Okay, so off she goes. Now, um, who's the next story? Do we get to Carrie? Um, no, uh, okay. So they all go to, I think I can branch out, they all go to this house painting, where they're basically painting this house that's mostly already built. Um, everyone shows up, Steve and Brady, so Carrie and Steve and Brady and that are all like talking and having fun and everything. Um, Seema's there, um, Lisa's there, Naya's there, and that was the best thing about this. They finally had all the characters all together all at once, and they all met each other. Because Carrie hadn't even met some of these people yet. And I'm like, how are these people going to be main characters or, or substantial characters in this show if they're only sort of playing in part of one of the characters' sort of story or backstory or just in their scenes? They need to either give them their own scenes and make them their own characters or just really just reduce them to just a secondary one or the other, because this backwards and forwards was kind of bugging me in the first couple of episodes. But, um... Naya's still having the problems with the boyfriend because he sees um, Lisa's husband being Mr. M Mom, being the perfect dad and everything, and he, of course, still wants kids, and she's like, aren't we done with this? And he's like, I shouldn't be talking myself out of this. I don't think I'm okay with this. And I'm like, I don't see them having a future because if you want kids and your partner doesn't, someone has to sacrifice, and you're just better off finding someone else who wants what you want, I think. It's a big problem some people have in their 20s and 30s when they get with people when children are an issue then they become an issue and then it changes them. So they had that issue. Lisa didn't have any issues. Um, she showed up in a limo which was an accident. She just asked for a car for like 10 and got a limo. Um, but um, the food, the caterer had cancelled but she fixed that. Um, and there was, I forgot, Seema's little story. Because this started off with Seema, it was her 53rd birthday, 54th birthday she couldn't get into a club with Carrie, they wanted to go dancing. They tried, they just said, look, I don't want to play out this scene, we've all seen it in the movies where someone tries to, you know, bribe someone into getting into a club. My friend, it's a birthday, she just wants to dance for a little while, we won't stay long, can we just come in? And he's like, no. She tries to offer him money, and he's like, that's insulting. They leave. Now, they were only about five people back in the queue. Why they couldn't have waited ten minutes to get in, I don't know, but I guess they weren't thinking of the seriously of the staging. I'm guessing there was supposed to be a big line, they didn't want to pay a lot of extras. But um, they leave, they have a little private dinner, and um, later when she's at the house painting, she, because Carrie's like, look, can I just make a donation? And Miranda's like, you will not be the white lady who only writes checks. And she repeats that to Seema, and Seema's like, oh, it's so hard to be a white lady. And she's like, I'm the brown lady, I'm going to be painting a bit of, I'm going to be signing a big check, I'm not doing anything. So she's just sitting down, smoking a cigarette, looking like a boss. So this guy pulls up and he's like, why is all this stuff out the front of my club? And, and, she's, and she's like, why are you asking me? And she's like, well, you're sitting here smoking a cigarette, you look like a boss. And she's like, you got that right. And something's happening there, so it looks like she might have found someone. Good. Good for her. I hope she has a happy ending. Um, and then we get to Carrie. Now, Carrie um, was supposed to have a second date with this guy, and she made the mistake of messing around with Big's ring. And she ended up putting his ring on, and she's like, I can't do this. And she shows up to cancel on him, which is nice, because like you said, best rejection ever. Um, she's like, look, I'm just not ready. And he's like, look, I understand. I still have my voices, my, my wife's voice message. I play it all the time. You know, maybe we're both just covering for not being ready for dealing with something that's, you know, hurting or whatever. So he says, well, you know, two strikes. We've got one more. She goes, and eventually... Because her and Steve have a, have, a, have a moment, because um, during when they're painting the house, 
Steve just asked her outright, did you know about this? How long has this been going on? What is this? And she's like, she, I don't know anything more than she's told me. From what I understand, it's not about being with a woman. It's about being with Che. It's about falling in love with that person. It's not just about the sex of the person. And when he's asking her how long it's been going on, he just wants more detail. Carrie's a bit awkward and she steps backwards in, in a tray of paint. And when she goes to wash her shoe, she drops the ring down the drain. She freaks out. Steve manages to get it out because it's just fell into the little um, trap part, whatever. And he's like, I understand why you freaked out. And, he, and she's like, you need to find, you should find someone else. You're a wonderful guy. And he's like, no, I, I said to a deaf to his part, this ring's never coming off. And he, he gave a really good performance. I, I you know, David I, Eigenberg is, is a good actor and he, he, he got me this time. I cried. I did because... Um, obviously he really meant when he said to a deaf to his part and he's really mourning this relationship. I'd like to think he'd move on eventually and find someone, um, not just be the sad old widow, uh, sad old divorcee, um, but we'll see what happens with him. Um, and I think that's pretty much the end of the episode. The last part of the episode, Carrie takes the ring off, puts it away, and then she goes dancing with Seema and they get straight into the club, they walk right in, and the guy who's running the club, he just opens you know, opens up and just says, you know, welcome boss, you know, and she walks in and, and just like that we went dancing and that's the episode. I loved it. Um, I'm loving the show. I don't understand why people are being negative um, about the show. I hope they have a second season and I would just like the, ha the haters to just be quiet. Now the people who like the old show because they viewed it as very conventional and um, very white and um, very heteronormative, who now have issues with the characters None of them really having conventional relationships now, except um, for Charlotte, of course. I think they need to calm down, focus on Charlotte, and maybe learn something from the other characters and their experiences. Open their minds up a bit instead of just being so nasty. Like all the people wishing the worst for Miranda, wishing that things would go bad with Che. It was just really ugly to see and read. And I'm glad they're having a happy ending. They're going well. Everything's fine with them. And I look forward to the last episode. I just hope it's not the last episode. Okay. I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.